to another Bible study on this Tuesday evening. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we bless you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you because there is no one like you. We thank you because your word gives us light. Your word is life unto us. Lord, as we study your word this evening, give us understanding. Give us all trance. Open our hearts. Open our minds, O oh God, that we'll be able to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to continue. I did mention the uh, last week that uh, the uh, topic of prayer is not one that we can easily complete in just one sitting. That's because we want to take a thorough look into, into it because it is the lifeline of the believer. It's not just a rhetoric. It's not just what we say. Amen. It's not just part of the cliche. It's actually what we do. It is actually our life. Amen. So we're going to continue um, today with prayer as union with God. Hallelujah. Prayer as union with God. It is very important that we take this seriously, um, especially when we look at our world today. Hallelujah. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So we look at all the things that are happening around the world today, the you know, wars and rumors of wars and hyperinflation and high interest rates and uh, uh, logistic problem and food prices and you know, petrol price and fuel price and you know, all sorts of things. If we're not careful, we can be sucked in. Amen. And when you get sucked in, that's when stress comes. That's when anxiety comes. And that's when you get to a state where you cannot actually uh, manage your emotions and you just be full of fear. But the good news is that God has given you and I everything we need to be able to overcome all these times. And the key and the answer is in prayers because in prayer we find rest in him. Hallelujah. So last week we did basically start by looking at the benefits of prayer. We, one of the things we said last week was that prayer, okay, Intense, fervent prayer for just 12 minutes a day. Over an eight-week period, the neuro, neuroscientist was able to actually mention on a scan how it changes the brain. Hallelujah. And we saw that when it comes to things like anger, fear, hypertension, high blood pressure, yeah, prayer actually lowers all those things. Prayer helps you control all those things. Hallelujah. And then every now and then, you, you, you say to people, you know, that God has everything. He's given us everything that we need. Amen. And then you begin to ask yourself, why is it that we're actually not taking advantage of it? Why, is, why are we stressed? Why, you know, do we have all these things? Hallelujah. Prayer can and it does actually change um, all these things. Now, I want to make it clear again, like we said last week, the kind of prayer that we're, not talk that we're talking about, you see, when it comes to prayer, the different kinds of prayer, there's prayer of intercession, there's spiritual warfare, and, and all that. But the prayer that we are concentrating on right now is the prayer of communion with God. So I don't want anybody to get us wrong, okay? There's, you know, many books written about prayer and all that, and we know that prayer changes things, and you know, we can do all that, but the prayer that we are looking at tonight is the prayer of communion with God. Hallelujah. Because it is at the place of communion with God that God actually brings changes to our lives. Hallelujah. Our pride, our arrogance, our uh, anger, you know, everything about us. It is at the place of prayer that God actually takes us, he molds us, and he breaks us into exactly what he wants us to be. Hallelujah. So tonight, I want us to understand something that is very, very basic, which sometimes uh, we actually don't talk about it much in, 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 in church, which is, okay, the entire Bible, if you look at the story of the entire Bible, is actually wrapped up in one story, which is Eden. 
and had to get back to Eden. So we all know from the beginning when man was kicked out of the garden, you know, because of the sin that he committed, right there and then God started to put things in place to bring about again union and communion with him. Hallelujah. If you look at, uh, you know, God made leaves. Amen. He, he, he took the, um, sorry, God took the skin of the animals. Okay. Man made leaves, but the leaves couldn't cover the sin. The leaves couldn't bring about union again with God. So what did God do? He uh, used the skin of the animal to cover them. Hallelujah. Because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. But apart from that, we can see Cain and Abel coming in to offer sacrifice unto God. Amen. If you look at it closely, you can see that everywhere, everything, the ultimate plan of God is the restoration of all things. And I don't want us to forget that. The restoration of all things. Hallelujah. Restoration of communion again with him. Whether you look at, you know, God instituting the tabernacle in the desert, and I've, I've talked about this um, a lot previously, but you see that the tabernacle actually mirrors Eden. Hallelujah. Every single part of thing. Why? Because God wants to reinstitute. God wants to bring back. God wants to actually bring back the communion that man had with God. And then you look at the temple, amen, and ultimately the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is to actually reconcile us back to God. Hallelujah. And you see the writings of Apostle Peter. He talks about the restoration of all things. So I want us to have that at the back of our mind. Amen. That what God really wants is to bring back that union that he had with the first man and the first woman. And the good news is that he's already made the way for us for that to happen. That's why let's look at Hebrews. If you look at Hebrews 5.16, Hebrews 5.16, you see there that the Bible says, Give me a minute. 416, sorry. 416, not 5. Hebrews 416, it says, Let us therefore come boldly. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Without fear or without favor, without, you know, sin having dominion over us, without anything, so that we can have that fellowship and that union with God. Now, if you actually go back to the Old Testament, you see that this is actually nothing new. Amen. You see, in, the, in Leviticus, which we're going to read shortly, you actually see there that God instituted the different types of offerings, amen? There's the peace offering, the meal offering, the grain offering, you know, there's the sin offering, the trespass offering, and all that. But God instituted the peace offering and the meal offering as a way for a man to actually come and have communion with God, amen? You know, there's no sin, there's no trespass, there's nothing. Just a man coming into the sanctuary, amen? So if we look at Leviticus chapter, basically from chapter 1 to chapter 3, you see all this explained there. A man just wants to come and have communion with God. Amen. And in order to do it, he brings an offering unto God, the peace offering or the meal offering. Hallelujah. And the priest, you know, we do all the sacrifices and everything. Sometimes there's an animal and they sacrifice the animal. And they come in 
just to have fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Because you see, the man is leaving his abode. Amen. And I'm sure all this will make, make sense shortly once we tie it all together. The man leaves his abode. He is the guest. Amen. He's coming into the house of the Lord. So God is the host. You see? God is the host. The man is the guest. He brings all the things for the offering. Amen. And they are all sacrificed and everything. Hallelujah. So that he can have a peace meal. Have a peace offering with God. Amen. You see, at the end of the day, that's why I said the idea is not actually new. Hallelujah. The idea that you and I, you see, we've got a longing inside of us. Hallelujah. We've got a longing inside of us to fel- want to fellowship with God. Amen. Like matter, we always stick to a magnet. That's how God created us. In every one of us, every human being, there is that longing, there is that void that God alone can fill. The problem is, when men see that they don't have God in their life, okay, or they don't want to come to God, what they then do is to fill their life with all sorts of activities. Amen. They feed their lives with all sorts of activities, you know. But at the end of the day, they find out that the void is still there. Hallelujah. Because the way we are created, remember I told you last week, amen, we are created with a body, a soul, and a spirit. Hallelujah. Why? So that we might be able to fellowship with God. You look at all of creation, all what God created, Man is the only being that has got spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Why? Because God said, we're going to make this guy in our image and in our likeness. Hallelujah. Why? So that God might be able to commune with him. Hallelujah. Because if it's in the image and in the likeness of God, that opens an opportunity for God to be able to commune with this person. Hallelujah. So like I said, if you look at the Old Testament, where a man, you know, maybe he's celebrating a victory, you know, uh, the, there's been a bumper harvest or something else, anything at all, he just wants to have communion with God. He has to bring the peace offering, you know, in, amen, and have a meal with God. Hallelujah. Let's actually look at it because I'm sure this, this will make a lot more sense. Let's look at Leviticus. Okay. Now, I will encourage you to read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 when you get home. So we're just going to read chapter 2. When any will... Oh, I'm starting from verse 1. And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall put oil upon it, and put frankincense therein. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priest. And he shall take there out his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the remnant of the offering, of the meat offering, shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. And if that bring an oblation of a meat offering baking in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or living wafers anointed with oil. And if the oblation be a meat offering baking in a pan, it shall be of fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. That shall part it in pieces and pour oil on thereon. It is a meat offering. And if the oblation be a meat offering baking in the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And I shall bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord. And when it's presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. And the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial thereof, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet servor unto the Lord. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Amen. Because of time, I won't continue reading, but if you read uh, the chapter 1 to 3, it paints a good picture for you. Hallelujah. But there's something else that happens. You see, what happens is that the internal organs 
Okay, you see there, it mentioned the kidney and everything. They actually burnt, hallelujah. They are burnt and sacrificed unto the Lord. So therefore, we see that this person, amen, wants to have communion with God. This person wants to have a relationship with God. Like I said, either to say thank you or just to, you know, feel the presence of God. What they do, they bring all this sacrifice and offer this peace offering or um, a meat offering unto the Lord. And I know you're already, you're already thinking, what has that got to do with prayer? Very simple. Hallelujah. Because you see that you and I, amen, you see, we are by the grace that God has given unto us as New Testament saints. Amen. You see that we don't actually need the priest anymore. Why? Because Jesus is our high priest. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You know, for sometimes I keep thinking, hey, every time you sin, you have to go and look for a lamb <laughs> that has no blemish. <laughs> and there'll be a lot of blood flowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. There'll be a lot of blood flowing and some people will go bankrupt. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they will go bankrupt because they are too much sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, but God has saved us from all that. But you see, this person wants to have communion with God. Therefore, he brings this offering unto God. Hang on. Remember where we left off last week, okay, where you and I, we want to have communion with God. We want to pray to God. We want to come into his presence. But what happens is that as soon as you make up your mind, you say, yes, today I'm going to pray. Amen? What are the things that come to your mind? All sorts of distractions. Both the one you know and the one you don't know, everything will start coming to your mind. Hallelujah. Everything will start coming in just to distract you and, uh, and, and you know, make sure your mind is divided and your mind is swayed here and there. Hallelujah. Where tonight, we want to look at the, if you like, first of all, the principle Amen. But we also then want to look at the key things that you can do. I don't want, I can, I, can, I can go into all the theology and all that, but tonight I want it to really be practical things that you can do. Amen. Practical things that you can start doing right now. Hallelujah. So that you are not unhindered. Amen. Remember what I said in last week? Everything becomes easier when you know how. Amen. When you know how. Everything becomes easier. In one, of the, one of the things that I really um, regret about in the Christian church is that, you know, we just tell people, yeah, pray, pray, pray. But we don't show them how. We don't teach them how. Hallelujah. Most times, a lot of people, have you seen people use a prayer book? <laughs> I tell them, step number one, say, say, dear Lord. And they say, dear Lord. I tell them number two, pray for this. You know, it's, it's going to be very, very um, mechanical. It will be, it's as if you are acting. You know, can you imagine going to your dad's house? Yeah, you go to, hey, Pop, <laughs> let me bring out my book first. <laughs> okay, you bring out the book. Okay. Hello, Daddy. <laughs> How are you this evening? <laughs> How are you coping with the cold? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have dinner yet? It will be very mechanical. It will be very, very... Um, there's no relationship there. There's no relationship. Hallelujah. But like I said, once you understand what's going on, you see that it's actually will be... It's, it's an enjoyable thing. It's something that you, you, you long to do. It's something that gives you joy, that gives you peace, that calms you. Hallelujah. So, you see... That once you make up your mind, first of all, you and I are priests unto God. We are a nation of priests and kings unto God. Okay? We want to have communion with God. Amen? Don't forget, you are the temple. Amen? Is this starting to, to, to make more sense and trying to gel? Okay? In those days, when a man wants to have communion with God, he has to take the offering and go into the temple okay, or into the tabernacle where there's a priest who is an intermediary that will do all the sacrifices on his behalf so that he can have communion with God. Amen. But now, 
Not only do we not need a temple, because we are a living, breathing, walking temple. Amen. So the temple is already here. Amen. Not only that, we also don't need a priest, because we have a high priest whose name is Jesus, who has already paved the way for us. Hallelujah. Remember when Jesus was crucified? The curtain that divides the Holy of Holies from the holy place was split in half from top to bottom. Hallelujah. Splitting the way so that you and I can have access to God the Father. Hallelujah. But you see, as you make up your mind, I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. The first thing that you start experiencing is all sorts of distraction. Amen. All sorts of distractions from here. Your mind is going here, going there. Hallelujah. It's very easy. So the very first thing that needs to happen is that you need to learn how to not calm, but also control your mind in terms of distractions. Hallelujah. And God has already made a way for us. Two things I want to share with you tonight that will basically help you, amen, to be able to overcome this stage. Amen. There are three stages, and we're going to, by God's grace, talk about the three of them today. The very first stage, like I said, is your mind going bonkers. Amen. Just going everywhere. Amen. Now, that's why we have praise. Remember, like I told you last week, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter his court with praise. David said those words and he knew exactly what he, what he was talking about. Hallelujah. When we're coming to our fellowship with God, amen, we're coming to our communion with God. I want you to look at it in that setting. This man is bringing his offering to have communion with God in the temple where there is a gate, hallelujah, that he has to pass through. Amen. There is a gate, an entrance that he has to pass through. I told you last week, that when God positioned the tribes, the tribe that was opposite the gate was the tribe of Judah, and Judah means praise. So I put that there. So when you see your mind start going everywhere, then you start worshiping God. You start praising him. Hallelujah. With worship and praise, what happens is that it helps you, you know, refocus and repurpose your mind, you know, Today, I believe you and I, you know, Bible says, to whom much is given, much is also expected. Today, you don't even need to know how to sing. <laughs> and they are for free. You just put on your YouTube, you have your playlist, and off you go. Hallelujah. In two minutes, amen, when you're following the songs and in, you know, with the heart of worship and with the heart of gratitude, what happens you'll be able to calm down your mind. You'll be able to refocus your mind. Hallelujah. But some of the things that you can also do, that's why when, when, when it is recommended, okay, that you pray early in the morning when you just wake up or at night when you are retiring. It's for a reason. Because those are the times where you are most calm. Amen. When you just wake up in the morning, you know, there's basically your mind is not, you know, over um, crowded yet, yeah? All the things in the world is not bombarding you yet. You see, that's the best time of your day. That's why it's recommended, amen? But personally, <laughs> my recommendation, pray with that season. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can pray any time, any day. Hallelujah. Like I said, once you know how, amen, it becomes very easy. But that's why it's recommended because at that time, your mind is still very still. At the end of the day, before you go to bed, what happens is that all the tasks you have that you want to do, you probably have completed them anyway, so your mind is more at rest. You see? That's why it's recommended. But the truth is, with praise, you can come into his presence anytime. Amen. But there's something else that you can also use. Hallelujah. This one, 100% guarantee. In fact, I think God has got a money-back guarantee on it. <laughs> Amen? This one is speaking in tongues. Amen? And I tell you, this one works every single time. Hallelujah. When you see your mind, you've made up your mind. Today, I'm going to pray. Whatever time it is, whether it's 5 in the morning, whatever time, you know, 10, any time that, that you choose, 
and you see your mind thinking about Auntie Betty, yeah, and thinking about Juliet, and thinking about what happened 15 years ago and this, God has given us a blessing. And the blessing is tongues. Yeah? Just start simple. Start speaking in tongues. From what I've experienced is this. When you first start, what will happen is that your mind, so your spirit kicks into action. Your spirit is praying, as you know, that's why it's called praying in the spirit. As you're praying in the spirit, your spirit is praying, praying but your mind might still be going here, there, there, and everywhere. But within a short time, what will happen is that your mind will then align yeah, and fall in line with your spirit. So you, now you are whole. Amen. Hallelujah. So all that distractions and everything in your mind will all be gone. You are whole. You line up and you, you know, go forward. Hallelujah. That's why God has given us this thing. That's why he says, on our own, we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit helps our infirmity. Which infirmity? Our weakness. Hallelujah. Our weakness with the sense that your mind does have the tendency to go here, there, and everywhere. But praying in the Spirit helps you discipline your mind and discipline your, uh, your thought so that you are able to come straight past the gates. Amen. So I want you to visualize this with me. It's a journey. Hallelujah. It's a journey for those of you who are just coming. See, one of the things which is fundamental to Christianity is the restoration of all things. Amen. What do we mean by that? Right from the beginning, when man fell, God started making a way to bring man back into communion with him. If you look at all the plan of God, I challenge you, look at every single plan of God. It is to achieve this thing. Back to Eden. That's why if you look at Revelation, finally, amen, he will accomplish the whole lot. Amen. Back to Eden. That's what it all is. Because in Eden, what we saw was fellowship between God and man. Hallelujah. But there's something else I want to share with you tonight. This is um, this is a good one. I don't know if everybody can see this, but I will talk about it. Bed, bus, bathroom. You see, research has shown those three places are the places where you are most likely to be quiet, naturally. <laughs> naturally, okay? So on your bed, yeah, you, I don't know whether you're waking up in the morning or, you know, you're retiring at night. Most times, your body and your mind is usually at a state of rest. Amen. So you find out that the struggle to get into the presence of God is diminished. Hallelujah. That struggle is not there that much. You see? So what happens is that you find yourself being able to actually press on because your mind, amen, and your body are already at rest. Amen. Now, so that's bad. But especially when you're traveling alone, we're not, it's not when you're traveling with someone else and you're having a chat. But when you are on the, on the, um, on the bus... Amen. Or train or whatever. Yeah. Or you are on your own. You're driving. You find that most times, okay, your mind doesn't wander that much. Hallelujah. So the reason I'm bringing this up, and again, these are actually times where people have groundbreaking innovative ideas as well. Amen. So this, I never play with these three, bed, bath, bathroom. Never play with them. They are golden opportunity. Not for communion with God and for God depositing his mind unto you. Amen. But also, if you, if you want to be innovative, if you're looking for groundbreaking ideas, that's usually the place where it happens. Hallelujah. Bathroom, we already... I maybe I've already talked about anyway. 
Yeah, it's, it's a place. You, you all remember Eureka? Eureka found it. <laughs> yeah. Was he Archimedes? I can't remember who it was now. Greek philosopher, yeah? He had this problem in his mind, and he's been thinking about this. I think it was a mathematical problem. He'd been thinking about it. How do I solve this? He'd been thinking, thinking. Then he was in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and then, bang. Yay! Eureka, I found it. And the man didn't know <laughs> that he wasn't dressed. He ran out of the bathroom. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> okay. So, these three, the golden opportunities. Golden opportunities. Because you're quiet at that time. Amen. Your mind is mostly at that. That's when God, you can use the opportunity to actually talk with God and fellowship with God. For those of you who are just joining us, welcome. We're talking about prayers. Hallelujah. Prayers. Because a lot of times people say, oh, I find it hard to pray. I find it, I can't pray. You know, some people say, oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. You know, all sorts of things. And I usually tell them the reason you find it hard to pray. It's because you have not been taught how to pray. Because once you know how, it's easy. Amen. So that's what we're looking at, you know, today. Um, I'll just quickly recap. The very first thing, when you want to pray, that's when you have all kinds of distractions. Amen. Let me see how much time I have to do a small recap for you guys. When you want to pray, that's when you start having distractions, Yeah. You're thinking, did I leave the kettle on? Is my phone ringing? Uh, those of you who are on all kinds of social media, that's why, anyway, let me know. I, most times I try to leave my own personal opinion out of, out of all these things because <laughs> only one person, you are on Instagram, you are on Facebook, you are on Telegram, you are on YouTube, you are on this. There's no way you're going to have fullness of mind. You're, it's going to distract you, okay? So... If the time you set for your prayer time, make sure that your devices, whether it be your phone or, or your iPad or your laptop, whatever, make sure they're far from you, okay? Because at that time, you'll be surprised. That's when alert, alert, alert keeps coming. Yeah, but you say, oh, but I really want to pray. And then these alerts are coming. Yeah, let me just check. Let me see. Who is messaging me at this time of the morning? It must be very important. Hmm, like, share, <laughs> comment. Before you know what is happening, the appetite to pray is gone. You see? So deliberately, because this is business, you mean business with God. You have set aside that time, say, this time I want to talk to my God. Okay? So you put aside all those things and you just come. But like we said, when you see your mind, sometimes even when you put aside all those things, you also see your mind wandering here and there. Okay, what you do, you start with praise. Hallelujah. And as you're praising, like, like we did say from the beginning, we're looking at practical ways, practical things that you can, you see our landlord, just <laughs> practical things that you can start doing from today. Okay, not from tomorrow, right from today. Amen. Because God is created us with the ability to actually fellowship with him. He wants you to come before him in prayers. Okay? So, that's one of the things to say. You start, you know, praise. And as you're praising God, you know, with the whole of your heart, you see that those distractions begin to go away. You say, but I don't know how to sing. I don't even know the, the songs. That's fine. Just put YouTube. Have your playlist. As your playlist, you just sing along. Amen. You see, we're so blessed. Amen. You know, 30 years ago, this, this was impossible. You see? You just put it. Today, they have all sort of, you know, streaming, Spotify, this, that, you know, SoundCloud, all sort of things. Yeah? You set your own playlist there, and off you go. Amen. And if you can speak in tongues, even better. Amen. Because when you start speaking in tongues, your mind falls in line with your spirit. Amen. But one of the things that happens is that as soon as you have the breakthrough, so my mind is no longer going here, there, and everywhere. Yeah? Now it looks like I'm taking off. 
one of the very first things that will hit you, okay, will be the consciousness of your sin. Amen. The consciousness of your sin, you start thinking, ooh, so 15 years ago, yes, the something cost $5, but I told my mom that it cost $15. And I pocketed the $10 extra. I didn't bring change, you know. The, the consciousness of, of your sin hits you. Hallelujah. That's why if we go back to the, um, remember I told you, when we're praying, amen, it's as if we are going. Actually, we are going on a journey, okay, from the flesh to the spirit. Don't forget, when man fell and Adam sinned, he was kicked out of the presence of God. Okay? So what we're doing in the prayer of communion is going back. Amen. Going back to commune with God. And once you go past the gates with praise, the next thing you see here is the altar of sacrifice. Amen. Very simple. Remember what, how we started at the beginning? So this man wants to have communion with God. What does he do? He brings all this offering. He brings it to the priest. And what does the priest do? They offer it as a burnt offering unto God. Very easy. That's where we also sacrifice, amen, all our sin our pride, our arrogance, our, you know, wandering thoughts, our lust, our, you know, everything. You basically put it on the altar and sacrifice it. Hallelujah. At this place, I've got a simple thing for it. Simple term, very easy. Amen? Very easy. So what we do here is we... We sacrifice, we confess, repent, and forgive. Oh, my body. So we sacrifice, we repent, we confess, and we forgive. Very simple. Now, Here's the part where I want you to pay attention. You've broken through through praise. And here you are now with your sin consciousness. Okay? Most times, some people become so discouraged, amen, because the devil, being the accuser of the brethren, keeps bringing back all these past things that they've done. And at that point, they get so discouraged that they don't go past there. Or they try to bring an argument, yeah, and try to argue with the devil. It's just wastage of um, your time and wastage of, you know, your spiritual energy. There's no need to go arguing. No need, because you will spend all your time rationalizing, oh, but I confessed that two years ago. Hey, didn't did the person say it doesn't matter, don't worry about it? And you're spending all your energy and all your mind. Is you having this conversation with yourself? No. Very simple. You know what Jesus said? Don't argue with your, the adversary. Just at the end of the day, it's very simple. We have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. We've been made whole and we've been made clean. That's why in Hebrews, which we read, it says, let us come boldly. Hallelujah. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain favor and grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. No need to argue with the devil. He say, yes, it's me. I did it. Yeah, but you know what? I have also been forgiven because Jesus it's already paid the price. Therefore, there's no argument to be had here. Amen. But there are times, okay, there are times where as you come in here, amen, 
as you come in, as you're praying, there might be things which you are wronging, okay? Sins that you may have committed that you might think, oh, I wasn't really at fault, or, or it wasn't a sin, or I'm not wrong, amen? The Holy Spirit can also use the opportunity to bring it to your attention. Like I said, that's when we repent, confess, and forgive. Now, forgive is very important because, believe me, all the people that have hurt you, <laughs> you don't remember them on a normal day, only when it's time to pray. That's when you remember, hey, in fact, the things that Janet did to me, <laughs> in fact, it shouldn't be done to anybody, you see? But the problem is when you've got those grudges in your heart, you cannot go past there. There is no way that you can come into the presence of God with unforgiveness in your heart. No way, it will work. It will not work. It will be a blockade. Hallelujah. That's the point where we forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the point where you forgive and you go, you know, God, you know, I thank God. Let me give you a simple principle. Simple principle works every single time, okay? Two people. There are two people that you always be at peace with. Those are the people you pray for. Yeah? So if somebody actually um, does wrong against you, instead of having the um, grudges against them, Start praying for them. Hallelujah. Start praying for them. Because what happens, once you start praying for them, then that release will come. That's why we call it forgiveness. The second person, the person you pray with. Amen. The person you pray with, you always be close to. Amen. That union will be there. Share the union. Amen. That's why it's always recommended that husband and wife pray together. It's for a simple reason. Because it binds the union together. Yeah. The person you pray with, the person you pray for. So instead of harboring unforgiveness in your heart and thinking, hey, that thing that he did to me, he, you know, some people say, I forgive, but I'm not going to forget. <laughs> you know, they all, start coming up with all sorts of things that are not even biblical, all sorts of things. But that's the point, like I said, that where we forgive, we confess, okay, we repent, and we sacrifice. Amen. But what happens is that you see, that once you do this, amen, and you go past this stage, hallelujah, remember it's a journey. Once you go past this stage, what happens is that then you experience a new level of release, a new level where you can then start pouring out your heart before God. Hallelujah. Then you can start pouring out your, your heart before God and, you know, all the supplications, all the things. At this point, you'll be so surprised, yeah? Sometimes even you shock yourself, you say, wow. Yeah, prayer is just coming out like, you know, like I'm shooting fire. Amen. Why? Because at that point, it's the Holy Ghost that is now helping you to actually do the praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you're just praying and you don't really, maybe somebody you met 15 years ago, somebody you met 20 years ago, suddenly from nowhere, they just enter your mind. And you're thinking, oh, okay. And then you start praying for the person. Amen. Or sometimes it will be a scripture, hallelujah, that you've, that you've read. And maybe sometimes you're thinking, I don't really understand this scripture. Or, um, I don't know, I, I understand it. Okay, but then you see the, 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 the light of God will shine afresh on that scripture. And you get a whole new revelation, a whole new meaning out of that scripture. Hallelujah. All this happened during the time of prayers. And that's when you start getting really, really energized. That's when you don't want to go back. Amen. That's why you're really enjoying it so much. Hallelujah. But I've got news for you. At that point, you know, like we said, you started out in the flesh. Your mind is going here and there. But you're able to steal your mind. You've broken through. And the consciousness of your sin is right before you. You confess, you forgive, you repent, you sacrifice, and then you 
keep going and then you see your spirit praying, you see light coming into scripture for you and you know, you're just having fellowship with God. Your spirit is energized. Now, that is not the point to actually conclude and stop and say, let me go. No. There's one more thing left. Amen? Everybody still with me? Mm-hmm. At that point, when it's time, when, you, when you've, you've done all your prayer, you will know. You will know. At that point, the Holy Ghost, yeah, will then start downloading stuff into you. That's not the time for you to keep quiet and let God commune with you. Very, very important. We don't just come before God, yeah, with a whole long shopping list, yeah? <laughs> you know, like, you are going to shop safe way. Yeah, this stick, this stick, this stick. I pray. For. Hey, look at my list. I pray for everything on the list. Okay, now it's time for me to go. No, amen. That's the time for you to actually be quiet and be still and let God talk to you. And let God, because you know what? You're not the only one who wants to talk. He too has been waiting and he wants to talk. Amen. But the difference is, this time around, remember we said spirit, soul, and body. The good news about this time is that you're no longer in the flesh. And let me just put soul here. You're no longer in the soul where your mind is doing this. You see, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Most times, okay, you've thought about some things and you made up your mind. You've done your research and you've done everything. And then you come and say, God told me. You see? But what I'm talking about now is where you're no longer here. You are now here in the presence of God. Then he starts to speak to you. This is where refining takes place. Hallelujah. That's where refining takes place. That's where God breaks us. That's where he molds us. There, if, if um, you know, pride and anger and, and deception and lust and, you know, all kinds of things. This is the place, yeah, where Jacob was wrestling with God. Say, hey, I'm not living here today until you bless me. And the man came out a different man. New name and a dislocated hip. Hallelujah. You see, I really wanted to spend time on this because what happens is that when we hear God here, okay, it's different. Even you, you who is doing the praying, you too will know. You will know that this is no longer me. I have transitioned, I have made, if you like, the journey from my flesh past my, my, my soul, where, you know, my will, my mind, my emotion, those are not the things at play here. Amen. And I'm not in the presence of God, and I know that it's God actually speaking to me. Amen. And that's why, again, I recommend, it's very good to have a notebook. Or today, if you like, you can have your, you know, your, your notes from whatever devices, so long as you take notes. Amen. You take notes because he's, he's speaking. Amen. And when he's speaking, you want to write it down. Hallelujah. Remember Habakkuk, he said, I will watch to see what he has to say to me. Hallelujah. And then you write it down. You know, Apostle Paul says something which is very profound, which I really pray that we all take it seriously where he says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, but the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. This is where the fellowship of the Holy Spirit happens. Hallelujah. This is where, you know, if if, if you remember with Abraham, amen, God came down to him. 
and they had a meal together. You see, all these things, I'm, I'm sure it's starting to make sense to you, and everything is gelling. Amen? When the angels were on their way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, amen? Again, like I said, I did say I'm going to try and make this very simple and not uh, go too uh, theological. But you can see it. Amen? The three of them, they come in, they're on their way to Sodom and Gomorrah. But what happens, Abraham said, oh, no, no, wait, 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 before you go. He prepared a meal, yeah, and they fellowshiped together. This is exactly what we're talking about. Amen. Everyone with me tonight? Amen. So these are the practical tips. And it's, here's the good news, okay? The good news is that once you start putting it into practice, okay, you see that some, the, maybe the first week, it takes you, I don't know, one hour, depending on how stubborn you are, and depending on, <laughs> and <laughs> because God is trying to break you down, <laughs> okay, and if you're very stubborn, it takes more time, <laughs> okay, and depending on how much you've managed to segregate your mind, you see, but when you feed your mind with the word of God all day, you see, when it comes to fellowshipping with God, it's become easy, because your mind is already prepared, your mind is, is ready, Amen. But when you fill your mind with, you know, don't let me go in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. All sorts of things. Yeah, all sorts of worldly and, you know, all sorts of worldly and uh, um, biblical things all day. Yeah, it, it will take you more time to get into the presence of God. But here's the good news. Once you start doing it and you're consistent, you see that easy, quickly you can, you know, be there in a shorter amount of time. Amen. Because that struggle is no longer there. Hallelujah. Because all the dealing with sin, all the confessing and repenting and all that, it's already been done. Hallelujah. And you see yourself flying through and just going straight and having communion with God. I want to encourage everyone this morning. See, this is the lifeline of the Christian faith. This is actually why Jesus died. Amen to wash us from our sins so that we'll be able to have the communion with him, so that we'll be able to come into his presence, so that he'll be able to speak to us, not just we speaking to him alone, hallelujah, but so that he can have communion. If you look at Revelation, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man opens, I will come in, I will sup with him and him with me. That's what Jesus wants. Hallelujah. But don't forget the major storyline of the Bible is the restoration of all things. Back to Eden. Back to Eden. Back to that place of fellowship. Hallelujah. So I want to, I think I still have a few minutes. I want to quickly lay the foundation for hearing from God. Very, very important. Because when you're in your flesh, you see, you can't be in your flesh and come and tell me that you hear from God. That's why people come out and say, you know what? God told me it's time to divorce my wife and um, to marry my secretary. You, you can tell it's very simple. It's, it's in the flesh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Very clear. This, now, when it comes to hearing from God, we're going to move, we're going to look at many cases where there's some that are obvious, very obvious, that this, I mean, this is just pure flesh, pure lust. To the ones that are called subtle, they, you know, it's very, you have to really have discernment to actually know that, hey, this guy is, yeah. But that one could be talking from the soul. The will, the mind, the emotions. Hallelujah. But when we live in his spirit, amen, there's a sure guarantee, hallelujah, that when it's spirit to spirit, amen, God's spirit communicating with your spirit, amen, you see that God then can deposit and give clear instructions. And I want to let you know tonight, God the God that we serve is the God that is there. Amen. 
and he's a living God. Now, one of the attributes of living things is that they speak, which means the God that we serve, he speaks, he talks, he gives instructions, he gives guidance, he gives protection, he gives ideas, he gives everything you can talk about, he gives it. So next week, I'm just preparing the ground. Those, that's the thing that we're going to be talking about, hallelujah, to make sure, you know, that, because I don't want, I'm tired of hearing, you know, a lot of things where, you know, yeah, people just say all sorts of things. They've already made up their mind. They've thought about it and they made up their mind. Then they, you know, just use God to rubber stamp it. Because guess what? When you say God told me, it's much more likely to be accepted. Yeah, we just use God to rubber stamp. God never said. But here is the part that is more dangerous, okay? When somebody is hearing themselves or hearing the news and they think <laughs> that they're hearing God. So it's, it's a, the person has made a mistake, but it's an innocent mistake where he thinks I'm hearing God, but he actually hasn't heard God. As far as I'm concerned, we're going to look at this more in depth next week. But you need to understand, okay, when it comes to hearing from God, there are three people that wants to speak to you. Three people, three active voices every day, okay, that want to speak to you. Guess who number one is? Yourself. Ah, we like to, you know, you know, that's why I love people who make positive confession. Yeah, I'm going to buy an airplane. I'm going to buy this. Ah, this, this. Oh. Nothing bad, it's all good. But the first person that wants to speak to you is yourself. So you conjure your utopian world, <laughs> how you would like things to be. <laughs> and then you come back and say, yeah, God said. Okay? The second person that wants to speak to you is the devil as well. He sure wants to speak to you so that he can mislead you. Amen. But the ultimate person that wants to speak to you is God. Amen. He wants to speak to you. You know, Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I don't mean to be offensive, but if you're not hearing his voice, <laughs> damn, there's something questionable there. You see, are you his sheep? Or are you a sheep and a shepherd unto your own self? Believe me, I've seen many. Yeah? They are their own shepherd. They are also the sheep, but they are also the shepherd. Yeah? They take charge of everything. Yeah, they don't, they, they, you know, they cannot be corrected. They, they cannot take instructions. They cannot uh, be humble. Yeah, they know everything. And, you know, you just, you know, name it. Amen. You tell them one thing, ah, don't worry. Yeah. I've done it before, don't worry. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So next week we're going to look more into that. But I want to leave you tonight with this simple thing that we talked about tonight. It looks simple, but I want you to start to practice it. Amen. It's not the hearer that is justified, it's the doer. Start to practice it just as we've said. Amen. I'm not saying that you don't pray or anything, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying... That, you know, you can actually get into the presence of God every single day and have that communion and that fellowship with him. Amen. And he can speak to you and direct you. Hallelujah. Now, don't go look. When you, you, you know, Christians are very funny. Believe me. When you say, you know, God can speak to you, then they start looking for some spooky, spooky, weird things. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> Believe me, it doesn't have to be spooky and weird God can basically say, you, I love you, you know, or God can just bring his scripture to your mind, you know. It doesn't have to be, Maybe. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, three times. Yeah. Yeah. That, it's, it doesn't have to be. Amen. You start hearing voices out of the wall. And you say, is God speaking to me? No. It's the inner witness. The inner witness. And when he speaks to you, you will know. The inner witness. Remember, 
Elijah and the still small voice. The still small voice is so tender, so tender that if you're not in this quiet, you see, I believe, personally, I believe God speaks to us every, every single minute. God is trying to speak to us. But the problem is, there's what we call noise. Yeah? Noise. That's the problem. When there's too much noise, you see, the still small voice is so tender that when there's a lot of noise, it drowns it, that you'll not be able to hear it. God is speaking, but you're just not listening because there's so much noise and the noise drowns it. Hallelujah. God has given us a wonderful gift. Wonderful gift. And that is the gift of being able to come and commune with him. The gift of coming to have communion with God. We started with the Old Testament and how it was in those days. You literally have to go and bring this sacrifice. And there has to be a priest and in a temple for you to just have communion with God. But today God is giving us express way. Express way. Yeah, like the autobahn in Germany. No speed limits. <laughs> Amen. You can just come racing in. Hallelujah. You can just, you know, come into his presence and have communion with him. This is the desire of God. And I believe it's a free gift that God has given to every believer. And we should enjoy it every single time. I encourage you, make time. Make time. We're all busy. There's, you know, <laughs> we, the word busy, we, we like to use it every time. But it's not actually a good word. But make time. Amen. If it's important to you, you, you will make time. Make time. Start small. Like I said, don't. It doesn't matter. Mr. Social and so prays for three hours. That's fine. Start with your 15 minutes. Start. Exactly. Start with your 15 minutes. From there, what will happen is that you see yourself, you know, having more time and enjoying it more. Start small. Be consistent. Because what I've come to discover, this thing we're talking about now, it looks lit to you. And it looks insignificant, but it is the major difference between Christians who persevere to the end and those who fall along the way. Because what's happening today, I don't know if you guys saw the census, the census figures that was released this morning by the ABS. I was deeply disturbed, deeply Deeply. Australian census. So if you remember 2021, was it August, August, because, you know, those watching from overseas in Australia, we have census every five years. August last year, there was a census, and this morning, actually, the ABS released the results. It's not looking good for Christians. The number of people who tick that they are committed Christians, it's going down. And I keep asking myself, we have such a beautiful relationship with God. We can't get enough of him. But why is it? Why? It's because, you know, when people cannot explain, when people don't have a reason to say, this is the God that I serve, and you know what? I've had a relationship with him. I spoke to him this morning. And he spoke to me. And he gave me clear directions for my life. He instructed me. You see, when you have that, what happens is that you, you want to keep going. You keep going. It's the lifeline. Like I said, it's the lifeline. But when somebody wakes up, you know, you go to church on a Sunday morning, and there's the hype and the pump and everything, and you're so high on, <laughs> on Monday morning, <laughs> You drop to the ground and you don't have any um, anchor, if you like, to actually hold on to. There's nothing solid that you hold on to. You see, what will happen is that you only get to a point where you think this thing doesn't make sense anymore. It's just a social activity. Anyway, let's pray.
Lord, we bless you. We give you glory. We thank you for this evening. We've looked into your word, oh God. I pray, Holy Ghost, help us to be doers of your word. Help us, oh God, to live a lifestyle of prayers, oh God, so that we can pray with that season. Whether we are on our bed, whether we are on the bus, whether we are in the bathroom, that prayer becomes our lifestyle. And communion with you becomes our daily yearnings. Help us, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take...